you and your mom and your grandma, you all had breast cancer at about the same age? Yeah, I was 40, I think. Grandma died when she was 41. Mm. And I know my mom, um, her breast cancer was actually at 42. We're finally having nice weather in Seattle, and it reminds me of an August day in 2018 when I first heard from my cousin Melody. So I'm on the bus riding home from work, and my phone vibrates. It's a Facebook message. So you called me. I I thought you were telling me that you had already had cancer, but actually, I guess you just found out. Yeah, it was like in May. I had felt a lump for like a little bit. I felt lumps before when I was in college. I actually had a scare. And they checked it out, and they're like, you know, it's nothing to worry about. It'll go away when we have babies. Her family has a history of breast cancer. Her mom, her grandma, two sisters, two nieces. And now she has it as well. Triple negative breast cancer. Several family members have gone through genetic testing, and they all have a specific BRCA1 variant. And so I found another lump, and at first I was like, oh, it's just the same thing, and it'll be fine. I better go check it out. And they called me back and they're like, something looks funny. Melody's grandma was my aunt Sina, dad's sister. And I remember sad stories about Sina passing away from cancer, leaving three young children behind. But I didn't realize the same cancer was so prevalent in her kids and grandkids. Did they inherit the BRCA1 variant from grandma or grandpa? Angelina and me, we got something in common, facing life's curveballs. Honestly, when Angelina Julie came out and talked about hers, Mm -hmm. about that point, I was thinking about getting tested and doing the preventative stuff. But I wanted to have kids yet. I was kind of waiting on that, and I kind of apparently waited too long. The only reason I've heard of BRCA is because of Angelina Jolie. I read an article in 2013 about how she got some preventative surgery after genetic testing. And back then, I chalked this testing up to things actresses do when they're looking for the next trendy thing to spend money on. I was BRCA tested five years after I had breast cancer. And when I received the, yes, you have the BRCA gene mutation phone call, my first reaction was relief. Oh, that's why I had cancer. One month later, September 2018, cousins Alan and Mary invite us to a Facebook group. Grandma was a Hubbard, and these cousins are descendants of her brother, Edmund Hubbard. The Facebook group was named BRCA1. Kind of an odd coincidence. I had always felt really proud of the fact that I was very healthy. I ate right. I exercised. I had a good mindset. So why did I get breast cancer? Cousins in the group begin to tell their stories. Mary discovered her cancer in 2013. She got mixed tests indicating that she had carcinoma and angiosarcoma. Angiosarcoma is really nasty stuff. She was told she'd be lucky to live for two years. The specialist at the Mayo Clinic told her to tell her brain that this cancer was regular carcinoma and could be treated, so that's what she did. In 2018, Mary and her uncle Alan began looking more closely at how many of their family members had cancer, and after some investigation, they found that genetic tests all pointed to a specific BRCA1 variant. My vegan friends said I ate too much meat. My meat-eating friends said I ate too many fruits and vegetables with pesticides. <laughs> My teetotaling friends said you drank too much. My friends who drank alcohol said, no, wine is good for you. You didn't drink enough. Mary created a hand-drawn family tree to track who had been tested and who had cancer. The list expanded more and more as cousins reported their status. Nobody knew where the variant originated, but as more people reported, All evidence pointed to either Grandma's brother or his wife. That's when Melody came online and shared her variant number. It was an exact match to all the other cousins. Melody was the crucial link. This variant appears to come from the Hubbards, both Grandma and Grand Uncle Edmund, through one of their parents, my great-grandparents. 
While we were having these conversations, Melody was going through chemo. Her sister came over and helped her shave her head. But by the second chemo treatment, I was pulling little clumps out. And I was like, yeah, it's time. So I called my sister and she just came over. And, and I think taking that, like, okay, this is going to happen on my terms and we're going to shave my head before all my hair falls out, kind of gave me some power back in that moment. She kept working through the chemo, but then one day at work, she didn't look very well. They sent her home and she fell asleep on the couch. Her sister came by after work and couldn't wake her up. The diagnosis? West Nile encephalitis. Is West Nile encephalitis usually that bad, or do you think it was way worse because your immune system was down from the chemo? It can be that bad. When I first started coming out of it, they were talking about like having to do speech therapy, physical therapy, all kinds of things. So I guess it's pretty bad on its own. And then to have the cancer and the chemo on top of it was like they really didn't expect me to live. They decided to completely quit chemo at that point because I was just too weak for it, they thought. And they did a scan to see where everything was at. And they're like, you responded really well. We'll do surgery now. Years went by quickly. Life's crazy. The years passed and I continued to read my cousin's BRCA stories. I found out that a person with an elevated predisposition to cancer is called a previvor. I don't know where they came up with that term. I learned that many health insurance plans cover genetic testing and that if you need to purchase the test yourself, color.com offers genetic testing for around $260 with occasional sales. I discovered that the primary concerns with BRCA1 are breast and ovarian cancers, along with some risk of prostate and pancreatic cancer. BRCA2 has some association with several other cancers, including a higher risk of prostate and breast cancer in men, and more cancers are being studied all the time. I didn't think I needed this test, though, because my dad lived to the age of 88 with no signs of cancer. But then one day I heard about another cousin with BRCA1. She chose to have the recommended preventative surgeries, including the total hysterectomy, and they found cancer in her fallopian tubes, which, fortunately, they had removed. According to my doctor, one of the problems with ovarian cancer is that it often starts in these fallopian tubes where it is undetectable. And by the time it spreads to the ovaries, it can be very advanced and hard to treat. So this preventative surgery may have saved my cousin's life. And after reading about her experience, I decided to go ahead with testing. I went in there armed with Mary's hand-drawn tree of all the cousins she knew about so far. The geneticist was impressed. Who wouldn't be? After testing was complete, they told me to expect an email notifying me of negative results, but that didn't happen. Instead, I got a notice asking me to set up an appointment, and all the cousins said, yes, if they want to talk to you in person, you probably have something of concern. They were right. I had the same variant as everybody else. In the follow-up consult, I was told that BRCA1 seems more likely to cause breast cancer in younger women between the ages of 30 and 40, but in the Hubbard clan, we see a broad range of ages. Mary was 62 at the time of diagnosis, the oldest cousin we know about was 75, and the youngest, 25. After my consult, I decided to get a hysterectomy and to sign up for breast exams every six months. At one exam each year, I have a mammogram, and at the other, I have an MRI. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Until BRCA1 knocked on my side. Now, you might be wondering, do I spend my days worrying about cancer? Well, no, not really, because I'm a professional worrier, so cancer has to get in line behind all the other things that I invent to worry about. I do think of cancer prevention as something to be smart about, like locking your doors or looking both ways before you cross the street. The biggest worry for me was, did I pass this on to my daughter? And what about my grandkids? If you have it, you have a 50% chance of passing it on to each child. We got my daughter in for testing as soon as possible, and thank heavens, she does not have the variant. Every time a cousin reports back with news like this, we cheer. Does Mary worry? She says, I'm not petrified, but I pay attention. And how about Melody? 
At first, I was really, really anxious about that for the first couple of years. But now I only think about it like really occasionally. I mean, you can't, you can't let it run your life. You can't let the fear of death stop you from living. With hope in our hearts, we'll be all right. I'm willing to guess that there are more cousins descended from both grandma and her brother who still don't know about this genetic mutation. It's a really big family. If you're a cousin, please spread the word. My Wyoming relatives said, well, you grew up in Wyoming. There's way too much uranium around, way too much bomb testing in Nevada, and you're downwind from all that radiation. Of course you're going to have cancer. (laughs) So my relief was, it didn't matter what I did. I was going to have that carcinogen invade in my body, and my body could not fight it off. 